Welcome to Free Media, Free Minds, a program where we discuss issues pertaining to media and media freedom in South Africa. Today we examine the current state of public broadcasting institutions in South Africa and look at possible outcomes of legislation to overcome the challenges faced by public broadcasting institutions. We are joined in studio today by Kate Skinner of Save Our SABC, also Nada Wachala, uh, she's the regional manager of the SABC in the Western Cape and Martin Jansen of Workers World Media Productions. Welcome to you all. Well, before we get into the discussion today, we take a look at an insert on the topic. Hi, what is the crisis at SABC about? Well, the crisis is twofold. Firstly, there's a, a the structure of the SABC and its relation to government and the processes whereby uh, people get elected to the SABC board. And the second crisis is a managerial one, uh, which concerns the management, you know, the people who manage uh, SABC and its various um, departments. And, yeah. So with regard to this, the structure of the SABC itself, uh, there are questions around how the board is appointed and who gets appoint who can be appointed to that board. Uh, one of the problems at present is that people who are political office bearers, in other words, you know, uh, high-profile members of political organisations, can be appointed to the board, and now that is causing a, a, a problem because there are ac accusations that people in those positions on the board are using that their position of influence on the board to pursue or drive their own political agendas and uh, then there are other areas um, such as uh, procurement for example the procurement of programs um, <coughs> human resources you know the mismanagement of, of people and contracts is SABC producing quality television? It's got good content at the moment. Well, it, it depends how you define this term quality. So, in a technical sense, yes, I mean, they, they produce high, you know, programs of high technical standards. The question is really around programming to match their mandate as a public service broadcaster. The, the, the type of programs that one sees on the SABC are programs calculated to deliver the maximum audiences to advertisers. So public service programming is not necessarily going to be that, that kind of programming. So a program that is educational, for example, might be you know, all, all very good in terms of its ability to inform people or educate people, but it might not be a very popular program. Essentially what's going to happen now in the not too distant future is that the previous Minister of Communications, Roy Pariachi, announced that there was going to be a process of policy review with regards to public service broadcasting. Public service broadcasting covers both the SABC and community broadcasters such as CTV. So government is going to in engage in this whole process of uh, talking to all the stakeholders and civil society and the public etc about the kind of policy that should be governing the SABC and the, the community broadcasters such as ourselves. So we'll have to see what emerges out of that and obviously we, go, we are going to be pushing for a policy environment that um, favours uh, community broadcasters or at least which enables them to carry out their mandate in terms of providing programming that is of benefit to our society. Of course, uh, comments the, about the SABC, the challenges that they face and, and, and how people uh, tend to see the SABC. But Kate, let's, let's come to you first and ask you, what is public broadcasting? That's such a lovely question. <laughs> public for me, public broadcasting is it's all about programming. It's, it's programming that actually creates 
um, citizens, empowered citizens that can um, make up their minds about who they want to vote for, who can make up their minds about um, you know, issues of land, issues of education, issues of health. It, 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 it's people that, that can debate um, things, um, have an opinion, um, and, and yeah, are, are, are citizens with, with their own minds um, and who can engage in debates. And, and that's what public broadcasting should be all about, is, is ensuring that, that citizens are, are created um, and have the space to debate the issues that they need to debate. Okay. Um, Martin, let's, let's move over to you. Does that exist anywhere in the world? Oh, I don't know. I haven't done uh, international research. Uh, I can only speak mainly from my South African experience. So in the case of South Africa, I think very, very partially in the case of the SABC. I think the SABC does have some good programming. If you look at examples like um, special assignment, for example, which focuses on issues that often affect marginalized groups like migrants and refugees. Uh, it also exposes corruption in both business and government, etc., etc. So I think special assignment is an example of a good program. It's investigative journalism. But I think most of the programs uh, on SABC channels are not in line with what Kate was saying of what a good public broadcaster should do or what good public broadcasting is all about. In other words, to uplift our people, especially those who are the most marginalized, those who are in poverty, to uplift them uh, spiritually, um, in terms of intellect, education, uh, development of their communities, and so on and so on. And of course, entertainment as well. My sense is that, and hopefully we'll get into the reasons, is that the SABC is, as the insert uh, indicated, is catering mainly for commercial interest, which means that the program is geared towards maximizing audience and advertising revenue. And for me, that's part of the problem, which then tends to lead to what they call dumbing down of programs. So it caters for you know, the lowest common denominator that anyone will find a bit entertaining. And entertainment seems to be the key more than entertainment and uh, relevant content, meaningful, relevant content that can impact on people's lives. Okay. Uh, and now, let, let's ask you, as, as regional manager of the SABC here in the Western Cape, uh, uh, you, you've heard the comments uh, from Kate and uh, from Martin as well. Um, is there legislation uh, that you have to stick to in order for uh, where programming is concerned? All right. Um, first of all, I would I would like to correct you know something. There's there's always a misconception when people refer to SABC, they think about television, mm. and you know the fact that more than 20 million people in this country wake up to public radio every day it means that uh, people believe that the SABC has the kind of programming that caters for their needs. And, the, you know, um, especially the vernacular radio stations, they are doing wonderful work in terms of what Kate was talking about, programming that empowers people. I mean, um, a, an old woman sitting in Eleni in the Eastern Cape, there is no way she can know that what she has in her eye is cataract and it can be corrected. You know, they sit and they think, um, I'm old, so I'm losing my eyesight, then it's fine. But a station like Umshabonen is a station that is going to tell her that there is somebody who can help you with that. Go to your nearest hospital on a particular day. There's going to be, you know, doctors that are going to be volunteering their services and, and correcting those things. Um, so so that, that's what basically, you know, um, SABC radio, public radio stations are, are focusing on. And um, SABC is not all commercial. You've, you've got your commercial wing and you, you are really not going to see a lot of um, educational programming or spiritual programming on Metro FM, whose mandate is solely to generate revenue for the SABC. Um, but it, it is a, a huge challenge, the fact that 80% of SABC's revenue comes from advertising. Um, so there will always be that commercial flavor in programming. But um, we're doing everything we can to ensure that our programming is not just, you know, um, commercially driven. Mm. 
Kate, how would you like to see, I mean, you've mentioned uh, before uh, when we ask, what do you see as public broadcasting? Mm -hmm. What would you then love to see the, the SABC do? Uh, Martin has mentioned um, certain programs on SABC that, is, that are fantastic, that, uh, you know, gives an idea of a public broadcaster. Uh, do you think too little um, is being done uh, where programming is concerned? Look, I mean, I think I think that, that the SABC has gone through some very difficult times recently. Um, you know, it, it, it's un been under serious financial crunch um, and so for instance if you look at local programming um, they have a sy situation or system called RFPs which is um, basically they, the SABC puts out a whole lot of proposals for local content uh, programming but because the SABC has been in such financial problems it has put out far less local content briefs than it than it than than it did previously. So basically, from September um, August two thousand and eight till to today, there's only been two books that have been put, brought out. So I think the the problem has been that we've had less local programming, um, and we've had more repeats given the financial crisis. Um, and I think so. What I would like to see is for more local programming for the finances of the SABC to be reorganized so that the majority of it is spent on programming, not on bureaucracy, not on management, not on anything else, but on programming, and particularly local programming. And even in terms of international programming, I think there's some interesting things there. It would be better not to, to see less American programming and more Brazilian programming, um, you know, South American programming, um, East European programming. I mean, so you get this interesting mix of international programming as well. So, so I think those are some of the things that the, that the SABC needs to concentrate on. Mm. Martin, in, in mm. the case of uh, community broadcasting, um, you know, is, is, is that what we want when you look at public broadcasting? Well, I think to some extent, yes. Um, community broadcasters would tend to focus more on their local communities, or that's what their mandate is. Uh, I suppose what we would be looking towards the SABC to do is to focus more on the South African community as a whole and obviously targeting certain groups that need support. Um, I think a very good example is public education. I think historically the SABC has had a very good um, tradition of promoting public education like matric uh, classes and support. Now there's no reason, this is the thing, that that cannot be extended to other levels of learning including grade one, two, right through the entire school career of, of children and then of course even tertiary education. So perhaps there should be an expansion, a growth of educational programming that caters for all levels of education including adult education and literacy. So that for me would be a big investment that a public broadcaster ought to make. At the moment it's not happening, it's happening to some extent, but we need more of that and the other areas as well. The big concern that, that I have from you know, the work that I do is that precisely as Nada says that there's this reliance on commercial revenue, 80% as she indicated, that tends to lead to in some instances indirectly, I'm not saying it's necessarily a conscious thing, but it leads to favoring of certain views and perspectives in the public uh, broadcaster and obviously in community and commercial broadcasting as well because the receiver of the income, the, in this case the SABC, would tend to want to accommodate the advertisers. So advertisers through their money, the fact that they pay for the space and the advertising, um, would be able to influence what the programming is about and in that way also at times influence views and perspectives. And I think that for me is something that undermines democracy in our society and specifically public broadcasting as well. Hmm. Um, Nade, if we can come to uh, what uh, uh, Martin just said now, does that affect your editorial policies, uh, uh, advertising or your advertisers in a way? All right, I, w I will always refer to my experience with radio. Um, you know, with, with, with radio, the kind of programs that Martin is talking about, your, your educational programs, you find that um, the, the radio stations, they cover all of that from, you know, we, we would say we, we cover the citizens from cradle to grave. You'd get educational programs, you know, from the children to ABET for the adults and, you know, university science and technology um, and, and metric, especially during this time of the year. Um, SABC radio, you know, is the only medium that 
you know, um, gives out so many hours um, to support metric in making sure that even the disadvantaged ones get an, an equal shot, you know, at, at passing um, their metric. Um, but yes, the, the advertising revenue, it does come to play a lot um, in, in programming. You would find that, you know, um, advertisers would want to be placed in prime slots. Like in television generations, you, you get a lot of product placement there where particular advertisers would want a particular actor to sample their product or talk about their product. And um, it, it, it happens and we, we can't really avoid it. All we can do is to make sure that what, what we, we broadcast or, or what we actually agree to with the advertiser it, it, it's, it's ethical, number one, and there is some element, you know, education, if it's a financial institution, it's just not about, you know, buy my product, but it's, it's educating people about, you okay, know, thank their you finances. so much. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. We continue our discussion on uh, public broadcasting. Uh, Nada, um, we've, you've mentioned of the challenges uh, that the SABC faces, etc. But when we look at uh, CTV, um, the kind of challenges they face, uh, especially we um, legislation in that is concerned, um, and, and the programming. Look, the, for Cape Town TV, the challenge perhaps is not so much in legislation. I think the legislation allows for lots of freedom in terms of broadcasting. There are very little restrictions. The problem really is uh, income. Um, community TV is meant to be non-profit, a non-commercial entity. Um, but the government unfortunately does not subsidize community TV. And if you're serving a community that's by and large um, a poor community, without lots of resources, then you're going to struggle to survive. Um, the community is unable to contribute towards the sustainability of the TV channel. And the big problem we're having at the moment is the charges, as I mentioned in the previous show, of Centec, Centec for signaling and transmission fees. They charge exactly the same as they would for the SABC or commercial channels like uh, ETV. Um, and the figure, as I mentioned before, we pay 70,000 rand a month in signaling charges alone. And so for a community TV channel to survive with that kind, those kinds of costs, and others like uh, paying staff and various overheads like rent and so on, it's almost impossible. What that then does is undermine the channel's ability to fulfill its mandate. Uh, we can't do much local programming and our programming relies to a large extent on contributions from independent producers locally and internationally. Um, so we're not able to do enough local productions because we don't have the resources to do so. Hmm. Kate, um, where the, uh, the public broadcasting bill is concerned, um, how do you think that will affect um, broadcasters? Well, look, I mean, the, it's very interesting because the Public Service Broadcasting Bill was actually withdrawn. It isn't, it isn't on the statute books anymore. And in fact, when um, our previous minister, Roy Pariachi, came in, within the first few weeks of him being in there, he actually withdrew the, the broadcasting bill. So um, what, what he promised in its place, which was what Mike was talking about, um, was a, a proper broadcasting policy review process. Um, and um, I, think, I think what's very important about that broadcasting policy review process is that we look at issues like the issues raised here around funding. We need a new funding model for the SABC and for community media. We also need to look at some of the governance issues. I mean, the SABC has gone through a number of crises around governance. Um, you know, how do we um, select the board? How does the board relate to management? How does management relate to the institution itself? So some of those very critical things, which I think have made the SABC unstable and also have created problems for, for the community media sector, could potentially be solved 
through this broadcasting policy review process. Um, and so what we wanting to do is to actually meet with the minister, um, the new minister, Dina Pule, to talk to her about how she's thinking of rolling it out. And we're hoping it's going to be a very, very public process where all of us, the SABC, community media, commu you know, um, civil society organisations get involved and actually say, you know, what we, what we want. So I think it is potentially exciting, this, this broadcasting policy review. Okay, brilliant. And um, uh, so, so the challenges faced by broadcasters, um, oh, uh, you say it's, it's, it's quite exciting times because uh, the, the public broadcaster uh, and the community will be coming together and, and having discussions around this well, bill. So, it, yes, so very sorry. unlike the, 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 the secrecy bill now, but <laughs> with, the, with the public broadcasting bill, you, you will be having that synergy going through. Uh, a absolutely. And I think the other thing which is interesting is not only is this broadcasting policy review process on the table, but also we've got to think about digital broadcasting. Because now the SABC is moving into a completely new environment, a multi, a real multi-channel environment where it's going to have 17 channels, television channels. So, and I think the digital broadcasting thing is interesting for television because we've always been quite restricted in terms of television, three channels. It's difficult to get all the programming that you want on three channels. That's why I think it's such important points you're making about radio. So, but now with the digital environment, you're going to have all of these extra channels so that you can do a lot of programming on those channels. But there's also real risks because who's going to pay for all of that programming? You know, and it's going to be extremely costly. I mean, the SABC is struggling at the moment in terms of you know, the TV and the three channels. So, so I think there's some interesting things there. And the Public Broadcasting Policy Review must look at that. How do you fund TV in the digital multi-channel age? Yeah, and, and we'll uh, have yeah. that discussion in, in a later yes. program in the series, of course. Martin, you've also mentioned um, dumbing down of uh, public service broadcasting. Um, can you expand on that a little bit? Is, is it where Kate said um, that we don't do programming that encourages people to think uh, critically, etc.? Look, I take the point that Nada made earlier that perhaps in the radio it's quite different, uh, particularly the vernacular uh, channels. So I think that point should be noted. Of course, one is one's own limitations as far as language is concerned. I'm only bilingual, unfortunately. So it's very hard for me to monitor what uh, is broadcast on other radio channels. But the ones that I am able to listen to, I think there is good content, by and large. Except what I've noticed over the past five years or more, maybe longer, is that there's a huge emphasis on talk radio. In other words, where you simply have a topic and you pronounce or you might have a guest in, in the studio and then you invite listeners to phone in. And this goes on for hours and hours and hours. Now, there's nothing wrong with talk radio, but I think we need to recognize that it has its limitations. Um, you know, anyone and everyone can mention anything they wish and often you know, on certain programs, uh, they talk a lot of nonsense. Things that are meaningless, despite the fact that public radio is a very valuable platform. You're speaking to the nation, literally. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of time is wasted on nonsensical views and views that are not really important or relevant to people's lives. Now, that's part of the problem of cutting down on cost on broadcasting, because talk radio is very cheap to produce. All it takes is a good uh, anchor person in your studio, uh, a phoning, phone in facility, and you can go on for hours. And some people find it entertaining. Whereas previously, and unfortunately, it was the apartheid era, which is not to say that it was positive, but where the, the broadcast was funded more fully by the state, they could produce better quality programs, like radio documentaries or TV documentaries, uh, drama, for example, was a big thing. I remember as a child growing up that we were entertained for hours uh, with radio drama. You know, you can talk about all those programs, mm. uh, as bad as they might have been in content in some, at some times. But it was very, very entertaining and also challenging, uh, especially radio, because radio leaves so much to the imagination. You know, sound effects and people talking and dialoguing. So that was good. And I just wish that we can have more of that. More of that can come back. But of course, that cost, it costs more to produce. So that is why we really, really need to look at the funding model uh, of public broadcasting. 
Okay, so that seemed to really come to the fore uh, with the funding in, in that is concerned, Nada. Is there any other way that um, uh, the, the SABC gets their funding other than advertising? Well, there's TV license um, revenue, but as we know, um, the majority of citizens of this country are quite poor and a lot of them live in informal settlements, so uh, making it difficult to trace who does have, you know, uh, television and who doesn't, you know, in certain areas. Um, so it's, it's only 18% that we, we're able um, to, to access from the public and 2% um, is from government. And now with the, with the new um, legislation, you know, if, if it finally um, uh, gets passed, you know, we, we would also love to see the SABC getting, you know, a bigger portion of its uh, budget from government so that at least, you know, we can focus on, on our core business, which is to produce the kind of programming that Martin is talking about. We really want to produce those documentaries and those dramas and, uh, you know, the variety shows, the, the game shows that, mm -hmm. you know, the SABC used to produce, which used to be very entertaining and, and very educational as well. Um, so, yes, you know, the, the, the funding model has become a challenge and we, we're also hoping that the minister will look into that. Um, but in terms of um, delivering on, on license conditions, I have yet to come across an SABC station that is not delivering on its license conditions because we do, we do have um, a set you know, number of hours that you know, we must produce. And, and, and in certain instances, we go way, way you know, uh, beyond um, those hours that you know, uh, were set by CASA for the SABC to deliver. Okay, and um, where your, your, your ethical standards are concerned, uh, you know, your news, the way you produce it and, and, and present it, etc.? Uh, um, yeah, I, I know that it's, it's, it's very debatable, you know, um, the objectivity of, of um, the newsroom when, you know, government funding increases. But, you know, we live in a democratic society. We'd have to find, you know, ways and means to ensure that, you know, um, the, the kind of news that we produce, you know, uh, you know, above board, and they don't favor any particular uh, grouping. Okay, thank you so much uh, to the panel for joining us this evening. This program was brought to you by the Friedrich Ebert Stifting, the Alternative Information and Development Centre in collaboration with Cape Town Community TV. I have the idea of a